I think it's fair to say it was a frustrating season for you this time round. You've managed to start. How, how's things going at the moment for yeah, you? Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, the pitch out there at Fret Row resembles something like a car park to be honest with you. So I'm going home and hitting the, the cod liver oil and every other tablet I can find to be honest with you to make myself get through the training sessions. But touch wood, I'm okay at the minute. Um, I think it's just old age. Yeah. <laughs> you take a lot longer to recover, but I'm sort of working on that as well off the pitch to, to get myself in, in good shape. Are you finding now that you, you, you're approaching the game a little bit different than you were, say, 10 years ago? Um, I've had, read this chat with Paul Connor, to be fair. I think sometimes when you have a sort of a family and that, you sort of settle down and that calms you down off the pitch. Uh, I think when you're a young lad, you can sort of go off the rails a little bit and going out drinking or whatever you're doing like when you're younger and enjoying the, the perks of being a footballer but I think when you sort of settle down and have a family your, your football sort of tends to uh, to get better as well because you're more settled off the pitch. Do you tend to give advice to some of the younger members of the squad or do they think oh here he is he's, <laughs> he's the old man talking you try, again? You, you try not to to be fair because I mean everyone's got to learn themselves I and mean, if you put your own opinions you're, you're sort of just going to push people against you so um, they're always there if, you, if people need to talk to you or well, sometimes with spells in games you can sort of calm the younger ones down but they're learning themselves and I think sometimes you've got to learn from mistakes that's the best way you, you can learn as a footballer really instead of listening to people um, if you need advice then ask the older players but nine times out of ten you've just got to learn from your mistakes I find that's what I found Changes in squad mean changes in personalities who are the big personalities now in the dressing room? Um, you've still got Louis Briscoe who's he's up and down like a yo-yo as a person on and off the pitch um, but we've got a couple of good characters to be fair. I mean, you've got like so Lee Stevenson and Lyndon that have settled in. Fantastic. I mean, it can't be easy when you come to a new club and there's all new players in. Um, you've got everyone. I mean, Andy Todd seems to be the brunt of, of most jokes and I think he quite likes that to be honest with you. But there's always one person that takes a bit of stick at a football club, but he takes it in good spirit to be fair to him. And it's a good team spirit and you need that, don't you, at the moment when perhaps performance is going well but the results aren't quite there you need that strength of character yeah I mean you've got a good team spirit I think that can get you sort of 10 15 points over the course of a season um, so sort of where things don't go great for you um, you sort of tend to galvanize as a team if you've got that bit of team spirit about you so um, if you can keep everyone together and don't sort of single anyone out or push them out of the group and little clicks and sort of don't develop and then I think that helps you as a, as a club throughout the season and what about the game on Saturday it is Kettering Town at home chance for three points isn't it it is, yeah. Um, they're going to be a bit of a wounded animal, to be fair to them. Um, coming off the back of losing 5-1, I, I think they're going to have a, a few of them have a point to prove to their manager. I'm sure he would have been happy after the game, so it's something um, we have to sort of be wary of. Uh, but first and foremost, we're at home. We've got to make that a fortress for ourselves at home. Um, and if we can play to the level that we did against Luton and just cut out, like I said, the, the silly set pieces, then I, then I think you've got a decent chance, really, to be fair. And finally, when do we play Lincoln? Um, I think it's on a Tuesday night, that's as far as I know to be fair, but I mean, like I say, I'll take one game at a time and, and worry about the Lincoln one uh, when that comes around to me. I was disappointed, I thought you'd know them straight away. No, father-in-law and brother-in-law know all them off by heart, but no, I sort of tend to concentrate one game at a time. They're, they're three points like anything else would be, to be honest with you, so uh, like I say, we'll cross that bridge when that comes to it. Thanks, Alan. Good luck, yeah. England C call up, you must be chuffed. Yeah, um, yeah we're well, all pleased about it. Like, it's, it's a bit of a shock, you know. Um, just like so early doors, about two, what two weeks into the season, and yeah, just Steve rang yesterday, just let me know, just start buzzing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that how you found out the club sort of phones you up and lets you know? Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah. Steve Barker just rang me. I was, I was in town with uh, Greeny and I. He says, "Yeah, you've been called up." I was just like, "Wow," you know what I mean? We weren't expecting it, so yeah, it's good stuff. And what did you say to your teammates uh, when you found out? I was buzzing. Yeah, I was just like, "Wow," like, I've just been selected for England C, so you know what I mean? I was just like, "Yeah." There was that like, award and then that's uh, you know, good stuff. Did they actually believe you? Because if they did, that means that they, they believe you worth it and deserved it. No. Or did they go, oh, you're joking, come on, someone's oh, no. joking. No, like, you could see it in my face, though, you know what I mean? They could tell I was, I was being serious, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I didn't, didn't know I was being serious. And you'd be hoping Tom Naylor's with you as well, he's in the backup squad. Yeah, I was just speaking to him um, about it now, he's saying, yeah, well, obviously he's saying, oh, he's um, the backup squad and that, so just, I think it just depends if someone gets injured or whatnot, but yeah, like, just high hopes really, all they can do is just hope to get in and that, so yeah, I like, hope it does, to be fair, someone else for me to go down with as well, who I know, so, yeah. And it's not bad having an England call up when even the gaffer says you're perhaps not at 100% fitness at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's it, I've still, like, with my foot on that, like, I'm still struggling with it a little bit, so that just says something, there's more to come as well, so I'm just, only time will tell. What does it mean to you to get this call up? Yeah, it means a lot, like, when, when I first found out I was coming to Mansfield, like, definitely, and that, um, 
like, like obviously thought like in the back of my head I thought about like England seeing that um, wanting to get into it and that like obviously last season was in a league below so it's a bit harder to get into it and then obviously going up into this league I thought yeah like that's one of the aims I want to do and then to do it within two weeks of the season and that you know what I mean it's just like it's amazing you know? probably, probably disappointment I mean a lot of them went to Italy last year and all that and you get Dagenham and Redbridge yeah. Yeah. ground this time for your, uh, for your international well, debut well yeah that's it when, um, when Steve rang me and that and he says oh yeah um, like, you've been selected this and that and he says oh you're playing uh, India I thought oh, yeah. <laughs> Going to India, I was like, wow. And they said, like, Dagon, I was like, oh, okay. Well, no, I feel like I'm not really bothered, you know. It's just like, it's just um, the chance to play in that for England, so I don't mind wherever I'll play anyway, you know. It's been, I suppose it's been a whirlwind sort of two or three months for you, hasn't it? Uh, it's been, I mean, when I left Eastwood, um, I, well, not left, but when my contract was up and that, like, I wasn't really sure what I was doing, and, that, um, and then obviously um, Gaffer was obviously in talks with uh, Mansfield, but he weren't really sure. And that was it, I didn't really have much else in the pipeline. Um, and then, yeah, and then obviously I was just thinking, oh, what am I going to do? I don't know where I'm going to do. I don't know where to, um, who to speak to or who to ring or whatnot. And then, yeah, he just gave me the call saying, oh, like, yeah, he's got the job at Mansfield, he wants me there. So straight away I was just like, yeah, it was indefinitely there. And I remember we played um, Colton Tan in um, the not Senior Cup final at Mansfield. And I remember turning to Siva saying, oh, well, you just want to be here, you know what I mean? Like the whole setup and that. And then, like, funnily enough, we're here now, so, yeah, it's tough stuff. What was it like, say, the first <coughs> few days? Was it a bit like going to big school, as it were? Was it, did you um, feel sort of like, oh, this is massive, this is, compared to what I've had in the past? Well, to be fair, coming to pre-season, I was dreading it, because I hate pre-season. But, um, yeah, when, when I first came in, it was like loads of lads. Like, most of the players, like the trialists, I thought they were players, like most of them, because they were good players, to be fair. And I was like looking and thinking, I was speaking to them, like they've been here, like, oh yeah, so uh, what's it like here? And, that, and they're like, I don't know, it's my first day in, so I'm like, all right. So it was just, it was just one of those, like, you could say that that first day at school, like, you don't know no one, everyone's looking over each other's shoulders and that. But yeah, like, I mean, the lads we've got, they're all spot on, you know what I mean? Everyone just made friends, like, within a couple of days, and that, and we just helped each other out through the running and that, you know what I mean? All the hard work. So, well, let's yeah. first of all talk about Lyndon, is England Sea call up. Having known him for years, you'll be chuffed for the lad. Yeah, re really chuffed for the lad. Um, you know, I've had him since he's, since he's been a baby. So to, to see him like, you know, just make the step up to this level and then get called up, yeah, I'm, I'm re really proud of him. Mm. Uh, what sort of job do you think he can do for the, for the international side? I think for anybody, I, th I think he's one, he's a crowd pleaser, but two, he's, he's an excellent footballer. Um, you know, and he's getting fitter now, uh, you know, and he, he's getting stronger. So uh, I, think, I think any level of football is, is going to be a handful. And it showed he made the right decision to come into Mansfield, two games, and he gets a call up. Definitely, you know, I, you know, I think if uh, if he didn't have the, the little knocks and, and little niggles in, in pre-season, I think you'd have probably seen a, a fitter and stronger Lyndon, and, you know. But I think there's more to come from the lad. He's he's a very good player, and I, like I say, I, I think I think the crowd will really take to him. It can be a double-edged sword, though, can't it, England? See, because you, you lose you lose him and you lose Tom Naylor for a few days. So perhaps the, the side, the fact that the match is in in this country doesn't make it so bad. No, I, I just think it's uh, I think I think it's good for Mansfield Town that you know we've got two two young players that. Um, the, the, you know, one, one's in the squad, one's in the contingency squad. I just think it's uh, you know the, the more players we have in there shows that the, we're heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. What about then? Let's go to Mansfield Town matters. We could replay Monday's interview, couldn't we? Frustration, good performance, but only got a point. Definitely. I mean, if you, if you look at uh, you know the, the games about you know, putting points on the board and, and winning football matches, you know, I honestly believe that we, we should have had probably at least nine points on the board now. Uh, I think that's a frustrating, frustrating thing. Um, you look at the performances, especially the last two, though. Um, how we've not won two games, uh, I, I never know. Um, but the, the, the lads are really, you know, really showing the right kind of mentality. They're working hard, uh, and, and more than anything, they played some great stuff. The, 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 the football we played the other night was excellent. Um, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, a result's just around the corner. It's a case of, you know, defending set pieces a little bit better. I mean, you can pinpoint it to that, can't you now? Definitely, if you look, if you look at four of the goals we've conceded have, have been from from sloppy set piece, you know, from, from just basic defending. And I think if you, if you narrow it down, it, it, it's what we're doing in both boxes at the minute that, that are probably letting us down, you know, because we had enough chances uh, in, in, in the last two games to, to, to have won both uh, very clearly. So, yeah, you, you, we just need to put those, those things right. And I know it's easy said than done, um, but if we, if we do that and, and, and like we keep concentrating for 90 minutes, you know, I, th I think we'll start winning football matches. Which side is most important? Which is better for you, winning 5-4 or 1-0? I take 1-0 every day. You know, I thought the other night, um, 
I thought up until the, the 78th minute, uh, I thought we looked compact when we was, when was defending. I never thought they were going to really break us down. And I thought we looked at a massive threat going forward. You know, in, in terms of our learning curve, in, in terms of this group of players coming together, uh, that was probably the biggest learning curve we, we've gone through the other night. And I'm just hoping that the lads now don't uh, don't get down on themselves because they, they haven't they haven't won a football match yet. Because I think there's a lot more to come from this group of players. Uh, you know, coupled with that, you know, we get some of the lads that are, are coming back from injury fitter and stronger. Competition for places <laughs> is going to be is going to be excellent. So. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that you know the next win's around the corner, and uh, you know, and I think these these lads are capable of going on a run of results. It's an important thing now, isn't it? So the physical side seems to be okay now. It's the, the mental side and, and keeping the the players believing that they can do it. How can you do that as a manager? Well, I, I think I think a little bit of just a little bit of um, going in there and putting a smile on the on the faces of the lads. You know, I, I don't think the lads did it very much wrong with the night. Like I say, if you look at the you know three of the games that we played out of the four. Um, I don't think the lads have, have, have really done much wrong, you know, I, I, probably the first performance at Bath was a, probably a little bit disjointed, um, 30 minutes at Gateshead I thought was excellent, then, then absolutely capitulated, um, but the last two performances, uh, you know, I, I haven't warranted me, me having a go at them, uh, we just need to tidy up on, on one or two things now, whether it's me or wanting things yesterday. Um, I think I need to be a little bit more patient, you know, with, with the lads. You know, we, we, you know, I want things done yesterday, uh, and, and I, you know, I've, I've come to the conclusion it, it, it's not going to happen that quickly, you know. But I think we've got the nucleus of, of what could be a very, very good side at this level of football, um, and I don't want to hammer, you know, hammer the lads and, and, and keep having to go at them um, because they're working hard, they're creating chances, um, and we get we seem to be getting done for every little mistake that we make at the minute. So. You know, um, sort of prognosis. Is that I think for future, you know, in future games, I can see these lads winning, winning games and, and 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 being consistently good winners. Hopefully, it will start at home on Saturday against Kettering. Difficult to work out what they're going to be like. They seem to be up and down like a yo-yo at the moment, Kettering. I think that's the, the, there's quite a few clubs in this league that, like, like, you know, I think there's a lot of managers at the minute scratching their heads and not knowing what what they're going to be coming up against on a Saturday. Um, you know what I want to do is I want to you know I want to concentrate on us and, and what we're good at and what we're not so good at. Um, try and tidy up the things we're not so good at, but um, to really get across to the lads that if, if they believe start really start believing in themselves, um, that they can they can really affect this league this season. What are you expecting from Kettering though? Are you expecting more like Bath or more like Luton? Um, well, we've had the report on them, and it was it was a strange game that Paul went down to see to be honest because they got beat five one at York. Um, well, that was at home against York, but. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter to be honest. You, you know, it, it was a strange game, but I'd rather concentrate on, on, on what we what we can do. And I just I just want us to go into the same same into Saturday's game with the same mindset that we did at Luton um, to play the same kind of way. And at some at some stage, things have got to turn because we, you know I don't think we're playing particularly badly. I'd, I'd say at Luton, I thought we played very very well. And if we carry on playing well, you know, we, we, we can't carry on with, with drawing games. Um, you know, we're going to win some. Let's talk a little bit about some of the injured lads. First of all, John Thompson. You mentioned on Monday that he was having surgery. Has that has that gone through, and has that been good? Yes, he is. Uh, you know, I, I spoke to John uh, yesterday. Uh, John's had, uh, uh, you know, his face bandaged, as you can imagine, and uh, he's quite he's quite sore at the minute. Um, but but really positive. You know, within sort of like probably four to stroke six weeks, then he'll, he'll be back playing, which is which is really positive. Yeah, but is he sounding? Well in himself, because that's the main concern, isn't it? I think. Yeah, I, I just think he's a little bit sore at the minute, I, as, as anyone would. You know, if you get those kind of injuries and, and, and you get that, you have that kind of surgery, he's a little bit sore. But I think, I think John's. You know, he's always, uh, he's always been on the phone, wishing the lads, that, you know, the best for the games. And I think he's like any other footballer that's been out. You know, that's, that's going to be out for a while. He wants to get back as quick as possible. But you know, positive signs from him. You know, I, I was really positive after the phone call. You, you were talking about probably bringing Paul Bolland in for Saturday. Is that still a, a, a plan, an idea? Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, we want people like Bowley um, knocking on the doors, you know, all the time. Um, you know, we've got Richard Sutton, that, you know, that should be coming coming back. You know, we're, we're going to have a sort of a small sort of side game today and, and see if we can get them a, a few more a few more minutes under the belt. Um, we want the squad as strong as possible because um, we know it's, it's going to be a tough old league this year. We're going to pick up injuries, we're going to pick up suspensions, uh, and we want good players that, that, that are going to come in and, uh, and, and make the side, well, keep the side strong. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not decided, you know, in terms of Saturday. Um, if I'm honest, once again, I don't think there's, there's much wrong with the side at the minute. I don't, I don't see 
yeah, many changes, if any. Um, but you want people like Paul Boland in, in, in your squad and, and, and knocking on the door.